Okay, welcome everyone. I'm uh, hopeful we're, uh, I see the recording button, so I think we're going. Um, my name is Tim Carter. I'm president of Second Nature. I know uh, uh, the folks at uh, Northern Arizona are really, um, they've done a yeoman's job here to, to get this um, event put together. And uh, Kate Peterson, we're really thankful that you uh, were able to connect and, and, um, and happy to kick this off. Um, I think this is a really important gathering. Um, first that we've heard about it, uh, something like this happening around the country. So I, I think it's really, really important to do the diagnostic work on how these carbon neutrality paths are working and going and, and share best practices and learning from each other about, uh, about what's happening. So we're really looking forward to seeing the ways in which this group and the the discussions that happen here, we could uh, even share the results out more broadly with our larger network and, uh, and potentially this could stimulate additional um, similar activities uh, in different areas across the country. Um, so, so thank you everybody for uh, both attending and putting this together. Um, for those of you who don't know, um, Second Nature, our mission is to uh, accelerate climate action through higher education. And for Past 14 years, we've we've been working on this. Uh, we've had the uh, Climate Leadership Network, which is a group of about 450 schools that have presidents and chancellors have committed their institution to achieve carbon neutrality uh, operationally, and then they also have commitments to have all students experience uh, climate action and increase climate research on their campus. So it's a multifaceted. Uh, commitment that these schools have made, these the president's climate leadership commitments. Um, more recently, we also um, started the University Climate Change Coalition with, um, with folks from the University of California and President Napol at the time was President Napolitano. And this is a, a second network, a program of ours where um, these are research institutions that are committed to uh, also accelerating climate action with goals consistent with the Paris Agreement. So many of the schools have carbon neutrality targets, um, but it's not a requirement. We actually have some schools in Canada and Mexico that are part of that coalition. So Second Nature is a network organization. Um, we drive really three main functions. We connect, we align, and then hopefully there's some co-production that ha happens among our membership. So I know this conference is, or this, you know, this convening is really about net zero campuses or carbon neutral campuses and the journey that y'all are on. Um, so I, I just wanted to make two really quick points to uh, kind of maybe set a little bit of the stage. We've had a number of conversations recently with, with some campus leaders, primarily academics, who have been thinking about how neutrality is, is really a, an important milestone, but it's really not an endpoint. And I think it's, it's an important perspective to have because on your institutions, you do have these, um, you know, clearly you have operational footprints and you, you know, if we're going to meet global goals, if we want to keep, um, you know, global temperature rise below two degrees, it's just very daunting. Um, we need to decarbonize, you know, roughly 50% of our global economy in 10 years and 100% in by 2050. But you know, the higher ed uh, sector, at least in the U.S., is about 3% of our emissions. So just doing uh, neutrality work um, is not enough uh, for us to accomplish the global goals that we need. We actually need the sector to also um, mobilize all of its assets um, to, to help society achieve its decarbonization goals. So as you discuss, so how do we you know, how do, we, how do we do X, Y, and Z technical solution on our campus to decarbonize? I think it's important to recognize there can be parallel paths along with that that aren't just treating the, the decarbonization goal of campus as the end, but in fact, it can be um, really a, a key milestone in your climate action journey, but not the end. We like to think about it in terms of a roller coaster. Many of you probably know when you start that first climb on the roller coaster and you tick up, you know, the, the big hill, and you're basically creating system change that you cannot return from. You know, these roller coasters are designed, you're never gonna back down that first hill. And so as you think about your decarbonization journey, I would also think about it like, how are we creating new structures that will not allow us to turn back? And then if we reach a, a target like a, a zero carbon or a, you know, even a carbon positive uh, target, 
how, how do we use that momentum to accomplish other things? And so that leads to the kind of the second point. And that is higher education is both, both an institutional actor. So you have decarbonization goals as an actor, as an institution, but then you're also an enabler of action. And, and really it's this, it's these, it's this both and a lot of folks in the, especially in operations, you know, you only are focused on your own uh, carbon footprint, but there's so much more uh, that the campus can bring to address climate change, both uh, in, even on campus, you know, doing research on campus, using campus as a living lab and a test site, as well as, as doing things off campus, you know, using your complementary strengths, both as a convener, as an anchor institution, you know, as an influencer, as someone who can uh, uh, step into policy conversations and advocacy, you know, as we think about an incoming administration at the federal level who is now going, has made climate a high priority and will create structures within the federal government that are different than what we have now, how can your institution speak into that and actually allow your own work to be easier and accelerate the progress that we see in society? So we did this through um, the We Are Still In coalition, which many of you may know about when President Trump announced his intent to withdraw from Paris, we brought higher ed into a coalition, really about the biggest subnational group um, that's been put together around this it was, you know, the fourth or fifth biggest global economy in the world, if it was a country, um, this We Are Still In group. Now it doesn't need to be We Are Still In, <laughs> you know, it's, we'll be back in, in about two months. And so that, that subnational group we, we really think has a lot of potential if higher ed can step into its complementary role. So I would think about your decarbonization journey as both your own footprint and your own institutional acting, but then how can you also use that action as a way to enable action in others and enable acceleration in others. So last thing I'll have George before I turn it over to you is it's just one call to one quick call to action. If you're not a member of ours, we'd love for you to join um, there's a variety of ways you can do that and feel free to, to reach out to me directly about that. There's also leading up to the Conference of Parties, the COP uh, in uh, next year, uh, will be in December of next year. Um, we're, there, there is a, the UN has put together this race to zero campaign. And so if you're not a member of ours, but you have a carbon neutrality goal, you have a plan to get there and, and you do have a way to report progress, please let us know that and we can get you on board for this race to zero. It's going to you know, there's business, there's cities, there's there's regions that are part of that that effort, and we would love to add you uh, to that list. So, with that, hopefully, that gives a little bit of context for where we sit. We'd love to uh, continue engaging with this group. Really look forward to hearing how these conversations uh, last. And um, I'm going to turn it over to George Koch, who's the pres uh, professor of biological sciences and associate director of ECOS. George, take it away. Great, thanks so much, Tim. It's really a, a treat to have you with us this morning, and you've already broadened my thinking about, about um, you know, kind of what we're doing here this week. So thanks so much for joining us. Um, so th to those of you in the audience, good morning and welcome to the bumpy road to net zero, paths to carbon neutrality in uncertain times. Um, Tim introduced me, but I'll say again, my name is George Koch. I'm a professor here at NAU in the Center for Ecosystem Science and Society or ECOS which along with the McAllister Program on Community, Culture, and Environment is hosting this conference. So we're thrilled that you've joined us this week for what we believe will be an exciting and productive set of conversations about the challenges of advancing climate change mitigation efforts at the universities where we work. Uh, this conference is the latest in a series of efforts by ECOS and the McAllister Program to go beyond our usual activities of scholarship which for many of us um, are in the area of the ecosystem science of climate change and to stimulate conversation and action across diverse sectors of society in a way that ultimately contributes to dealing with the climate challenge. Um, before <clears throat> saying any more, I wanna be sure to thank several key groups and individuals who've made this conference happen. Uh, NAU's Office of Sustainability and the City of Flagstaff Sustainabilities Program are, are vital allies in NAU's climate action planning process and really important collaborators on this event. Um, I wanna upfront thank our cohort of moderators from NAU and the City of Flagstaff who you'll be meeting in the individual panels this week. Uh, ECOS grad student Taylor Sheriff was 
instrumental in gathering and sifting information about climate mitigation activities at universities around the country. Stephanie Mayer, ECO Senior Program Coordinator, has just been a super member of our planning team. She's a terrific organizer and facilitator and has really helped bring this event to life. And finally, uh, Kate Peterson, our brilliant science communicator and coordinator in ECOS and McAllister deserves a huge shout out. Kate and I shared an early vision for this event and it's Kate who has made it happen. Uh, just a couple of last thoughts about our motivation for this event. As a research center, we believe that chronicling the impacts of climate change is, is really only part of our work and that acting on what we learn is a fulfillment of our public research mission. And we know that climate actions are most just and effective when they're made in community and attend to the experiences and needs of those most affected by climate change. We also know that higher education can be a catalyst for these actions. And as community and economic leaders entrusted to train and guide next generations, we really do, we really must lead. Last thing, just to bring things back to this very day, um, this afternoon I'll give the last lecture of the semester in the undergrad ecology class I teach. Appropriately, the topic is global climate change and I'll be rushing over the scientific basis the impacts, the human and natural systems, and the potential for mitigation. And I, I really hope that when I next teach this class, in part as a result of our work this week, the students in that future class will be inspired to learn how their university and others are taking aggressive, committed, and meaningful action to address the climate challenge that they'll be living with throughout this century. So thank you again for joining us and uh, I'll turn things over to Stephanie Mayer who will uh, kick off our first panel. Thank you.